Because the cam is still gaining popularity in the camera industry, it is very hard to find a variety of gimbal setups with this camera. And although the Zcam user group is an amazing place, Facebook's search feature certainly is not. So in today's video, I'm going to be discussing with you guys my Ronin S setup that I use to pair the impeccable image quality with super smooth gimbal shots. What's good everybody? For those of you guys who are new to my channel, my name is Sydney Baker Green. I'm an international photographer, cinematographer, and colorist. And as I stated earlier in this video, we are going to be talking about the Zcam F6 Ronin S setup. Any products that I mention in this video are certainly going to be found in the description down below. Any camera rig setup starts with a solid cage. And in the Zcam's case, this is not an exception. So we are going to be pairing the Zcam F6 with the Knight's Zcam cage. There's two things that I really like about this cage. The first one is that it comes with two airy roset mounts on either side. This is super nice when I'm transferring from my gimbal setup to my handheld setup. It allows everything to flow with ease. And furthermore, the second point is going to be the fact that it has a plethora of screw holes with different size options, which really allows me to mount any peripherals or any accessories on the gimbal as needed throughout the shoot. There hasn't really been a situation where I have ran out of space yet. Although the Zcam F6 does have autofocus, it is still pretty much in the developmental stages. Therefore, it is absolutely imperative that we have a follow focus for the setup. My follow focus of choice for a plethora of reasons is going to be the Tilta Nucleus M left grip partial kit. I wanted the follow focus system to have enough strength that it would be able to work with any lens as I never know if I'm going to be using simply still photo glass, vintage lenses, or cinema lenses. So this follow focus system really put me at ease. But furthermore, this follow focus system comes with absolutely everything you need to have an essential kit. I didn't have to worry about finding fitted follow focus rings for my lenses as it came with adjustable ones that I can fit to any one of my lenses in any situation. And furthermore, it comes with an adapter that is a rosette adapter that allows me to not only mount it to the Ronin S, but also allows me to mount it to the cage as well. So this follow focus system really was able to function in many different places, not only as a follow focus system, but also as a handle on my cage, which we will talk about more in my handheld video. So stay tuned for that. The cool thing about this follow focus system is that it is wireless, so I'm able to control the focus with the little knob on the left grip, which is super nice when I'm trying to adjust any tracking shots, and it just, again, consolidates everything down into one area. Now, the hardest challenge I ran into was going to be powering the motor. Trying to save as much money as possible on this kit, I didn't want to invest in a $60 cable to connect the focus motor to the Ronin S, but I did find that the provided cable that is supposed to be a motor to motor cable functions very well to power the motor if I connect it to the handle and power it from the lithium ion batteries in the handle. As you can see in this video, it is a super simple setup and it works super nice. The only thing I caution you on is that if you do plan on running a run stop cable to use the record button to your camera, then this won't work and you will have to invest in a different way such as a V-mount option or a cable to connect the motor to the Ronin S to power the motor. Lastly, in order to attach the Nucleus M handle to the Ronin S, I simply took off the DJI focus wheel and attached a NATO rail plate on the side of the Ronin S. And from there, all I needed was a NATO to rosette adapter to attach the Nucleus M handle on the Ronin S. This was actually something super complicated for me to find because although I've seen this setup done before, I didn't exactly know what to buy. So I've linked that in the description down below for you guys. If you are looking for a full tilt to Nucleus M review, stay tuned to make sure you hit that subscribe button as we are going to be talking about that in the coming weeks. The follow focus system doesn't just magically flow in the air, so we are going to need a rail option. I really wanted to keep this as small as possible, so I simply found two rail rods on B&H, and I also found a rail adapter that was super compact that I simply attached to the top of the cage and run it as so. And everything works out super smooth. I don't have any instances where the rod will move. Everything can be secured down nicely as well. So the link for those are going to be in the description as well. The next 
essential piece of equipment is going to be a solid monitor with a good mounting option. In my case, I use the Atmos Ninja Flame and I pair that with the Polar Pro Ronin S monitor mount accessory. This monitor mount option comes with everything we are going to need, the arm and the mounting equipment to the Ronin S. All we have to do is take off one of the plates on the Ronin S and as you can see, I am just installed the mounting plate here on the side of the Ronin S and then we attach everything from there and screw it in tightly. The Atmos Ninja Flame is a seven inch monitor, which is my personal preference, but I will say that if I could go back and maybe do something different, I would look for a different mounting arm for a seven inch monitor. This is simply because I don't have the most space between my hand and the monitor. It doesn't necessarily get in the way, but it's not necessarily out of the way as well, if that makes sense. But the majority of people out there that I see are actually running the Ninja 5, the five inch monitor. And in that case, you are going to be solid, especially if you have a ProRes RAW workflow, that is one of the most common go-to monitors for that. So if you're running a five inch monitor, there's nothing to worry about. But if you're running a seven inch monitor and you like your space, your personal space, you like your gear to be socially distanced from you, then you might wanna consider a different mounting option. The next important piece of equipment we're going to need in our rig setup is of course going to be storage. How are we going to record all of these beautiful files if we don't have a place to store them? The camera won't even let us do it. There are two ways to record on the Zcam F6. It's going to be CFast memory and SSD storage. Now, of course, CFast is the recommended way to record as it is the most reliable. And in those situations where I need reliability, I choose to use a Sony CFast card. Oddly enough, this card stopped working on my 1DX Mark II, would not work in the Ursa Mini Pro G2, and would not work in the C200. However, I put it in the Zcam and it let me format it, and this card that I've had for two years that I haven't been able to use magically now works with Zcam, so I don't know what y'all did, but kudos to you. Now, if you are not looking to invest into CFast memory and you absolutely need an SSD, then whatever you do, do not buy a Samsung T5, buy a SanDisk Extreme Portable SSD. This is going to be the best option for recording as it just is built for a little bit more data intense work and I have found no performance options in this case. I've recorded a full hour and 45 minutes, 6K video straight through, no stopping, with absolutely zero problems on this SSD. Now to mount this SSD to the cage, I chose to go with a small rig SSD mounting accessory that I found on B&H. This is not the Samsung T5 accessory. Specifically use the link that I give you guys down below and if you need to look for it someplace else, copy the name or the item code, whatever you need to do to make sure it is this exact one. As there is another option out there that is the Samsung T5 that will not fit the SanDisk portable SSD, so keep that in mind. Now the last essential piece to our rig setup is going to be battery options and counterweights and these two go hand in hand as this definitely affects how the camera will fit on the Ronin S. Now when it comes to batteries I use MPF batteries and I definitely try to stay on the smaller side of MPF batteries because if they get too big then you will hit the back motor on the gimbal. A battery this big is something that I would consider too big. This is one of the original Sony MPF batteries. I believe this is the NPF 970 and it was too big to fit on my setup. It at least with the amount of counterweight that I currently have. So in the description down below, I have linked the MPF batteries that I use so you can get an idea. I am not the person to talk about when it comes to V-mount battery options. For counterweights, I opted for the small rig 200 gram counterweights. I currently have one, that's all they had at B&H. Some other ones are on back order, but I think I'm gonna end up having around four to five counterweights, as again, this camera is back heavy. I am able to get away with one, but I'm not able to use all of my lenses, so definitely get counterweights. And I find that this camera actually tends to be left heavy as well, so if you mount them on the right, you will definitely have more room to play with when it comes to balancing your gimbal. But the more weight you can get on the back, the better. There's even a little port where you can mount a counterweight on top of the SSD holder, which is super cool and a place that I'll tend to use it. And the nice part about these counterweights is that they have screws on top so you can stack them. Anyway guys, this video took me about 60 minutes to make. I have no idea why it was so hard for me to talk about my rig setup. But if you guys like this, be sure to give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and turn on those post notifications if you have not. Be sure to follow me on my social media. A link is in the description down below as well as the YouTube fam. Their links are also in the description down below. If you guys are ever feeling uninspired, uncreative, or just want to give up on life, remember, 
every day airplanes take off against the wind. Keep climbing, stay inspired, and as always guys, stay fabulous. My name is Sydney, and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.